humans of the cardboard welcome back to just nuts guys today i just want to say happy july 4th if you celebrate it if not hopefully it's just a good regular roll july 4th of the year great good enjoy that um hopefully it's a good day for you Today, we're covering news that has been coming out, sprinkling out, I would say, over the last couple days. We've got the new Terror King Salmon card. We've got the new Albaz lore, the new Ecclesia form, I guess. Uh, a weird demonic pair of scissors, which is very creepy looking, uh, very Edge Imp-esque. And then uh, also the new Ninja Guy got revealed officially last night. So a couple sprinkles, we'll run through these real quick, and then we will uh, we'll get out of here and let you enjoy your July 4th. So... Uh, yeah, starting off here, we have our Infernal Queen Salmon. Uh, this is supposed to be the modern day counterpart to the original Terror King Salmon. This is a level 5 water fish effect monster. More fish support, 2400 attack, 1000 defense. You can only use each of its effects once per turn. If this card is normal or special summoned, you can special summon one fish normal monster from your hand, deck, or graveyard. Um... That's pretty good. Uh, <laughs> if you can just get this out, you get another fish normal monster. Uh, it doesn't have any level restrictions, so you could just summon a level 5 and just immediately make a rank 5. There's no restriction on extra deck stuff, what you can summon for the rest of the turn. So, pretty good. I mean, you do have to play um, a vanilla brick in your deck just to make this like do anything. So, that's obviously like the downside there. But, okay, not bad. And the second effect, if this card is destroyed by battle or this card you control is destroyed by an opponent's card effect, you can special summon any number of Vile Pawn Salmon Tokens. That would be a Fish Water Level 1 zero, 0 stat tokens. That's really interesting because it's just any number. Uh, so technically if you have no other monsters on the field, this will just summon you five tokens to do whatever link climbing shenanigans you can you can dream of which is pretty interesting um it does give you the potential to just like summon this go battle phase crash it into something and then uh just get five tokens so very very interesting um i think the biggest downside of this card is that it's a level five monster that just doesn't summon itself you would have to have another way to get it on the field that makes me think of something like a uh, lantern shark just pulling a uh, a fish monster out of the hand that's most likely the way you would see this like be summoned but i'm sure there are other ways i just don't know them off the top of my head it's an interesting card i just I just, it, it seems a little bit clunky, a little bit bricky. If it did what it did smoother, like had a way to jump on the field easy, then this card would be super interesting um, for water decks and fish decks alike. But unfortunately, I think it'll just end up being a little bit too clunky at the end of the day. But, you know, it is what it is. It's, it's still a pretty cool card. And um, maybe people will try and make use of it in like a fun, cheeky water deck. But we'll see. Moving on here, we have Red Cartesia the Virtuous, or Cartesia the Red Saint. That makes me hopeful that maybe this will be the official name, Red Saint, and maybe this will be the beginning of like a weird little theme of like Red Saint monsters, because her design is awesome. It does appear to be a new form of Ecclesia, um, but like a dark uh, kind of branded or um, despian version of Ecclesia, which is very cool. She's a light spell caster. 15-15 for the stats, level 4. And she's actually a tuner as well, which is pretty interesting addition to her, her stat lines. Pretty cool. And she has three hard ones for turn effects. The first effect reads, if you have Fallen of Alabaz on your field or in your grave, summon her from the hand. Nice, easy. We've seen specifically Despia decks. So good at just getting Alabaz in rotation. So this is not a hard... Uh, summon condition to fulfill second effect during the main phase as a quick effect you can fusion summon a level later higher fusion monster from your extract using monsters from your hand or field as material that's pretty good um it's a quick fusion and it kind and it can also be one of the materials by itself so like you may not even need so it kind of like takes out one of the materials you'd norm normally need for a fusion because normally you need a spell and two materials at least uh, this card is kind of both one material and the spell at the same time, which is pretty cool. Um, and it's a quick effect. So, like, being able to quick make Chimera, um, if you already just have two more monsters on field or in grave, is pretty cool. Because, um, specifically versus Despio, you'll see a lot of, like, DD Crow sided in, specifically. 
um, to counter it. And so if you have Branded in Red and that one gets DD Crowed, you could still potentially resolve this card to still have outs like ways of having that quick, you know, interruption on your opponent's turn. So I respect this card. That's pretty decent effect, I would say, overall. And the third effect, during the end phase, if a fusion monster or monsters was sent to your graveyard this turn, you can add this card from your graveyard to your hand. Oh, that's also not bad. I mean, it's a slow kind of return on investment, but it is follow-up. Um, I was literally thinking about it, and I was like, wow, if this card, like, had, like, if this card had the claws where it, like, counted as Albaz, it would probably just power creep Albaz a little bit. Not not entirely, because, like, uh, most builds that, like, uh, like Despia builds are on more than one Albaz anyway, so you would play, like, what, take out one copy of Albaz for this, and then this would be one of your dump targets, because this, like, guarantees you an extra card in hand follow-up powerful normal summon threatening card on the field situation um or even like just powerful extender too like it's honestly a pretty cool card um i don't think any of its three effects are bad at all i think they're all solid solid extension effect solid quick fusion effect to threaten your opponent i love that it's just generic any level eight or higher fusion can kind of just come out of this um and just that recovery effect is really nice as well especially if you're pairing it with like a, a branded deck and you're you're able to just like use mirror jade every turn and guarantee that this card's coming back to you it's pretty cool um the parts that i feel like this card is a little bit clunky is just that doesn't have dogmatica in the name doesn't have despia in the name doesn't have really like any archetypal names in its in its text so i don't believe it's like super searchable at all the most searchable i could see it being is just the fact that it is a generic light so you could just send this off of uh like a branded fusion for your albion um fusion requirement for the light um but there were also just better targets out there you know what i mean there are just other cards that are just a little bit faster a little more aggressive this one's good uh, but i feel like there are probably better targets overall maybe it's a one of in some spicy builds just for like that grind game if you're going to be resolving brand fusion being able to send this as your light it's a fine card to draw definitely a fine card to draw but um I just don't know if it's like overly good enough to like warrant really seeing play when it, it's not as accessible as you'd overall want it to be. So, um, yeah, really interesting card. A lot of good effects going on, but I just feel like they might have. It just might not be enough. It might have not not have enough synergy to work really smooth with the deck. All right, moving on here. Soul Scissors. Apparently, this is a um, manga card or video game card, whatever this is. Yeah, oldest video games. Dual Monsters Four: Battle of the Great Duelist. Uh, very old looking card, but even the artwork looked so similar, <laughs> even that old. But yeah, um, this is Soul Scissors. It's a Fiend Effect Dark Level 2. I was so close because like anytime we get Dark Level 3 Fiends, uh, I look at like uh, Lair of Darkness just because of Ties of the Brethren and the Lady of Laments. But uh, this one is level 2. So you can only use the first and second effect of this card once per turn. If a monster or monsters on the field is destroyed by battle or card effects, so any monster, yours, your opponent's just destroyed uh, by any card or effect or battle, um, and sent to the graveyard while this card is in your graveyard, you can special summon this card but banish it when it leaves the field. Second effect, if this card is special summoned from the graveyard, you can target one monster your opponent controls and destroy it. Huh. That's pretty cool as well. Um, this card definitely seems like a, a secondary, like, splite kind of support situation where this gives them a little more variation in terms of, like, interruption. They, like, right, like when we get them and Toad is not banned, uh, assuming that, uh, it'll be a super heavy, like, negate type deck. You're summoning Toad, you're using Toad to negate, and then you're reviving it to have a second negate right they're, they're most of their interruption is coming from toad but if you can get a card like this in rotation it also gives you the potential to just quick effect revive this off of elf and just have essentially a dryant for a monster revive this use this effect to pop something like that's pretty solid all in all um i don't hate it i think it's a decent card i just you know trigger effects like this that require something to be destroyed you may need a specific archetype that wants to destroy itself to kind of get this rotating but like all in all i think this is a pretty good card maybe we can see this splashed in, in spicy splite decks i don't know but that's the first thing that's coming to my mind at least 
All right, then we get to the final piece here. The most exciting thing to me overall is this new ninja card. I read him last night before I went to bed, but it was too late. I already uploaded a video, didn't want to do that. So we're throwing it on here. This is Green Ninja. I've already shown you all of his stats. He's a level two wind warrior ninja monster. He's Green Ninja. We do not have a Green Dragon Ninja, so maybe we could get something that translates from that. But here we go. 600, 600 for the stats. Pretty weak, but he's level two. I didn't really expect anything crazy. You can only use the first and second effect of this card once per turn. If a monster or monsters is special summoned to your field face up, you can target one of them, special summon this card from your hand, and if you do, change that monster to face down defense position. Very cool. Okay, so a couple things here with this first effect already. Um, I think you can target, uh, don't quote me on this, but I think you can target a link monster on this because if you special summon a link monster face up you can target it special summon this card because then it says and if you do so this clause only happens like if uh you do this then you try to flip it face down so i think you'd still be able to summon this guy you just wouldn't be able to flip the monster that you summoned face down which is cool um I definitely like that because uh ninjas have kind of steered away from being flip monster decks um Anyway, so you don't really want a lot of your ninja stuff face down anymore uh, But this does mean like even if you can just get to Saizo and you have this in hand He still jumps out to give you that material that whatever trap you get off Saizo This can be tributed for it and then the second effect which I think is like arguably the best effect on him If this card is sent from the hand or field to the graveyard You can target one monster on the field any monster on the field change it to face up attack position or face down defense position really really solid on that um uh this card is actually just generically pretty good when you read this second effect i even think about just like i sold decks like what i sold decks consider playing this where like they can just i sold this out of the deck or add it off of i sold but the turn one and if they have a quick effect way to like discard a card on the opponent's turn then like it this will trigger to like book of moon something pretty interesting uh to me like super interesting to me um this card that way I, I just love how generic he is right sent from the just sent from the field or hand to the graveyard then you get to book a moon something that's pretty good uh all in all so i like this card a lot i actually think this is a really solid card for ninjas a couple of the things i had talked about with ninjas needing is like they need an extender they need ways to put uh, get bodies on the field to get to Saizo. Um, Saizo is an awesome, like a really good card um, for the deck, but like the deck just isn't good enough at getting into him because they don't have enough extenders that help you like link climb and, and get into him because he does need specifically two ninja names. It's a little tough. Um, but I do think all in all, like this card, one, extends itself on the field easily enough. And secondly, um, this card also... Uh, adds interruption to you. You want this to be your tribute target for one of your ninjutsu art traps because if you do something, let's say, let's say um, the oh my gosh, the shadow ceiling. So you'll you'll tribute him to to banish a monster your opponent controls. Then you trigger him to book a moon another monster your opponent controls. So it kind of just makes like for double the interruption, double the power on some of your your interruptions at the same time. I think this card is pretty solid. Now. I don't know. It's definitely not enough by itself, but it is a nice start. It is another uh, colored ninja, so we should hopefully get a green dragon ninja. And I hope they just make the dragon ninjas like less clunky. Like maybe give them actual summoning conditions so they're like not just awful bricks to draw. That would be really cool. But obviously, we need to see where Konami wants to go. They had a couple of reprints in the in their most recent tournament pack for the OCG. Hopefully, that means we have more ninja support coming down the line. Because this card is nice for them. Like, it's it's a nice card for ninjas. But it's not fixing the archetype by itself. So, I don't think it makes much sense for Konami to just make this without making any other ninja support. Because, like, why make support that doesn't actually, like, really make the deck playable? Um, if you're gonna, if you're, Unless you're going to make the deck playable. Like, that's, like it's just not going to get people excited if it's not actually doing, like, pushing the deck to the next level. So, very, very cool. Really solid card. A couple interesting cards in here. Um, I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts down below on all of these. So, let me know in the comments. Have a great fourth, everybody. Thank you for watching. Subscribe to the channel if you want to see more stuff from me down the line, and I'll see you in the next video. Peace.